The first 23 centimetres are the topsoil. That's where most of the activity happens. It's where most of the roots are, and roots put energy and carbon into soil, which support the life in soil. So the first 23 centimetres is also the plough depth in agricultural systems that are ploughed, and it's nine inches in old measurements. So um, it's the living skin of the earth. It's where most of the activity happens. In this teaspoon is one gram of soil. There'll be at least 100 million, maybe a billion bacterial cells, probably of about 10,000 different species. There'll also be thousands and thousands of fungi there as well. So it's incredibly diverse. 2010 was the 350th anniversary of the Royal Society. And we were lucky enough to be invited to this year's summer exhibition at the Royal Festival Hall. This was attended by members of the Royal Family, Royal Society Fellows and several thousand of the general public. Our exhibition, Journey to the Centre of the Earth, is involved looking at the biodiversity of soils. Soils are very complex and biodiverse ecosystems and we're interested in the functions of these, these soils and how the biodiversity affects this, these functions. So some of these functions include the nitrogen cycle. So this is where atmospheric nitrogen is taken in by um, bacteria and converted into a form where plants and other organisms can utilise it. So what we are doing is we're extracting DNA from the soils from different environments and we're using that DNA to determine the biodiversity of those soils. So this is an example of a grassland soil where we've extracted the DNA and looked at the biodiversity and the number of lights represent the diversity. When we're then looking at different environments, for example, this one is a permanent wheat field, um, you can see that in this case, the diversity is, is quite, it, it's diminished a bit, but it's still very high. However, when we then look at contaminated industrial sites, we can see that there is quite an adverse effect. So here we are seeing that the diversity is greatly reduced, but it's whether that is important. Um, is there a, a corresponding loss of, of important functions within the soil? And it's relating the diversity and the function that we are interested in. And if we are losing particular functions within different environments, how can we bring those back? Soil supports all life on Earth, and it supports it not just physically, but biologically and chemically, because it's teeming with organisms, microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, and small animals, invertebrates. And they all contribute towards recycling nutrients in soil, which is really important and gives plants the nutrients they need to grow. And also to breaking down um, old residues of plants and other dead animals and such like, making sure that the water that runs through soil is clean and minimising any greenhouse gas emissions. So having a healthy soil that functions as we want it to is really important to all life on Earth. Until we were able to uh, use modern molecular methods, we could only culture 1% or fewer of the bacteria in soil. We knew very little about them, but now we can look at their DNA. We can extract DNA directly from the cells in soil and analyse it by sequencing, because sequencing is now cheaper and more effective. And, and that allows us to uh, actually get a handle on what's in soil. We can look at the diversity of different species and we can also find what uh, gene pathways are there so we can predict what functions the organisms in that particular soil might be able to do. So this is a game that um, we, we set up for the Royal Society um, Science Exhibition where people could come along and they could actually put in some of the DNA sequences that we've, we've um, sequenced and identify the organisms that they are related to. So at the moment this sequence is being processed and it's being um, compared to, to all the known sequences. Um, and this is what we get quite, quite often, is that the, the DNA that we're looking at is from organisms that we know very little about, from unknown species of bacteria. So although we can usually relate them to particular groups, we can't go down to the species level. Alternatively, um, we get um, organisms that we do know something about. 
So this is an example of a bacterium that we know quite a bit about. This is um, Pseudomonas fluorescens. So Pseudomonads are very important in the carbon cycling in that they're fast growers and they utilise um, carbon sources that come from, from, um, from roots um, and they are involved in, in cycling that carbon back into the environment. The Terra Genome Consortium is an international consortium of scientists who are interested in studying soil um, functions and in protecting soils and, and they wanted to find a reference site where the soil would be a good um, reference for all other soils in the world. And they decided that a species rich northern European grassland would be a good one and they picked park grass at Rothamsted. Park grass is important because it's the, the, the controlled plots on park grass have been maintained for 160 years with very good records and we know there have been no inputs, there have been no animals grazed on them, no fertiliser added. We know what the temperature, rainfall, sunshine has been, we know which plants have been growing there in this natural mixed grassland. So we have extremely good records of this site and we know that it's been protected. So people working around the world in different soils will be able to compare their soils to the park grass metagenome. This study should help us monitor the uh, changes in the future. Uh, it should help us to, to see in advance if there are trends where particular groups of organisms with particular functions are being lost or perhaps increasing in number. Um, it may tell us if we grow new crops and we see changes in soil by comparison to the existing database um, that we're going to have problems in the future or that we're not going to have problems. After all, what we need to do is to be able to um, maintain the soil for future generations to go on producing crops and to go on having clean air and water.